This video was created to help the HVAC professional install and maintain TACO equipment. Please read the on-screen disclaimer before viewing this video. Today we're going to be focusing on the Fuel Miser, which is an outdoor reset and a single zone switching relay combined into one box. The advantages of outdoor reset is energy savings. Anytime we can lower the temperature in the generation equipment, we can get some energy savings. Typical energy savings range anywhere from 12 to 14 percent. Some people uh, experience up to 30 percent depending on application. Here is the uh, Fuel Miser SR501-OR. What we'll do is we'll take it out of the box, inspect, validate. We have all the components to go with it. Next step will be to mount it on the wall. Always like to put a level on things and validate that we got it where it should be. First thing that we'll do is we'll wire up some of the uh, line voltage wiring. You know, there's some knockouts down on the bottom of the control. Of course, we'll knock that out and put it in. There's many different ways to wire it up. Uh, some people would use a BX type material like we're going to be showing today. Some people use a Romex. And uh, with the BX, we'll use these uh, connectors here for strain relief. All right, the next step we'll do is wire up the incoming line voltage. It's labeled hot and neutral in here. Let's just bring our power into it. In this case, we're going to be showing it's wired up with the BX cable, which is an armored cable. Some codes allow this to be the ground. Other ones uh, require a separate ground wire. There is a screw in here for grounding if you, your codes require that. So let's just mount our wire into here. And hook up the hot neutral. Typical connections, you know, again, black wire is the hot wire. And of course, neutral. And we wired up the line voltage. Uh, it also has an output for a circulator. In this case, we'll be wiring up a circulator, so we'll connect up line voltage to our pump right there. Again, same as before, bring it in, wire it up to the hot neutral outputs. On the line voltage, this would be your final connections. Again, we'll just to rehash our line voltage input on the power here. We're a hot neutral input, hot and neutral. Again, the black and white wire respectively. And we also have an output for a circulator. As we uh, expressed in this case, we're gonna be wiring up an external pump that will operate whenever there is a call for heat and the same thing, hot and neutral respectively, going out to the circulator load. So up on the top are the low voltage connections. What we'll do is we'll bring in all our signals, our sensors, our connection to the boiler up on the top. Uh, there's many different ways. We're going to start right now with the uh, thermostat connection. Uh, thermostat would be anything that's going to make the call for heat. If it's a multi-zone, that would be off an end switch of a zone panel or just a single zone system, a conventional thermostat. Hook it up to on the top to R and W would be our thermostat connections. Next connection will be a domestic override. In some cases, we'll be using an indirect water heater, and we want to have the ability to override the outdoor reset during a domestic call. In that case, right up in here, DHW override, we'll bring our wires in for that. In this case, we're going to hook it up, R and W again. Uh, next connection we'll connect is a signal to the boiler. When there's a call for heat, we want to be able to enable the boiler when there's uh, a call. So we'll hook that up from here, from the uh, dry contact of the boiler connection output to TT on the boiler operating control. All right, those are our main connections. The only other ones that are required now will be the sensors. We'll mount an outdoor sensor and a supply water sensor. Again, the outdoor sensor will be mounted on the north side of the building, preferably not in the sun, and the uh, supply sensor will be mounted on the pipe, leaving the boiler, giving an accurate reference of what the outgoing temperature is on that. So again, outdoor sensor. And next will be the uh, supply water sensor. Uh, completing the sensor wire, we want to mount the outdoor sensor on the north side of the building, uh, preferably, you know, under an eave where it's not going to get involved in any kind of snow. Uh, 
Not always can you get it on the north side of the building, especially on a retrofit application. So we just try to say somewhere not in the direct sunlight. That will actually fool the sensor into doing it. It actually includes the sensor in it right here. Some people get deceived. There is a terminal block right here, and the sensor's already molded directly into it. So again, we'll mount it on the outside. We'll bring our wiring into it. All right, and then we'll wire up the sensor itself. We'll just stick our uh, thermostat wire that we use to extend from the control over to here, wire it in, tighten it up, and finish the uh, installation. Yeah, the supply sensor would then be mounted on the pipe leaving the boiler going out to the system. We'll put a supply sensor on here, put a wire tie across it or a clamp, and don't forget to insulate it with a piece of Armaflex when you get done. This completes the wiring of the control. As you can see, we have all our low voltage wiring done up on the top, as well as our line voltage down on the bottom. The next step would be doing the setup. Uh, the only adjustments are uh, over here. We have some three dip switches to set up the configuration uh, application and a dial to set up the reset ratio. So let's look at the dial over here. It's anywhere from uh, minus 40 degree outdoor temperature up to plus 30. We tried to simplify the application of doing this. A lot of them have a reset ratio or chart you have to look up. On ours, you purely take your outdoor design condition and set the dial appropriately. Uh, this happens to be in New England. Typical temperatures around here are zero to plus 10. So in that case, we'll set it for 10 degrees out here. So at the coldest day, typically at 10 degrees, we'll deliver 180 degree water temperature. Pretty straightforward. Then we have the three dip switches up on the top. Dip switch number one sets the boiler minimum. The default setting is 140 degrees. Most conventional boilers out there are of non-condensing style and we have to worry about a boiler minimum temperature. So our default setting is 140 degrees, so we always maintain. So I would leave dip switch one on. If you had a boiler that can take lower temperature, you can turn it off. Dip switch number two is for a boiler differential. Basically, we're saying depending on the mass of the boiler. Uh, a high mass boiler, we can have a much uh, tighter differential, a low mass boiler, a lower differential. In the on position, it's 20 degree differential, and the off uh, switch setting, it will be 10 degree differential. It's up to you. I would start it at 10 degrees if it, it seems like it's short cycling, and you can put it on 20 degrees. And the last switch over here, dip switch number three, is a configuration of, um, with a domestic water heater with our DHW call over here. Do I want the circulator to operate during a DHW call? So by setting the switch, when there's a call for domestic, I will run the circulator and the switch set to the off position when there's a call. It will not, it'll just fire the boiler depending on the application. All right, just to sum it up, uh, we've wired up all our sensors. We hooked up our connections to the boiler. We did our line voltage. We set up the reset ratio, again, which is our uh, design outdoor temperature, and set up our three dip switches. We're all set to go. We could turn it on and uh, check the system out. Uh, one thing that we've seen from experience, the number one problem in the field is low voltage wiring. If there is a problem with the control before jumping to conclusion and condemning it, it tends to be a field-related wiring thing. Another good thing would be to check your sensors. If we're going to check the sensors, it would be with a good quality digital ohmmeter. Undo the sensors and measure the resistance and look in the chart and make sure that everything is in uh, where it's supposed to be. Visit us online for more support and information on the full line of Taco systems and components. Thanks for watching.